This video will discuss the molarity and molality of solutes in solution. So from previous videos, we started hinting at the fact that as the mole fraction of a substance approaches one in a solution, we can call that substance the solvent, and it obeys a standard state, which is the Raoult's law standard state. And as the mole fraction of a component approaches zero, it is said to be the solute so that it would be described using a Henry's Law standard state. So the activity of component one, our solvent, is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of that component divided by the vapor pressure of the pure liquid of that component. The activity coefficient for our solvent is going to equal its activity divided by its mole fraction, which is equal to its vapor pressure divided by its mole fraction times the vapor pressure of the pure liquid. So the activity coefficient is equal to one when the solution is ideal, and when the solution is ideal, its activity is equal to its mole fraction. All right, so that's the solvent. It's fairly straightforward. Um, There's pretty much one way to do it. You pretty much always use mole fraction, and we often don't have to worry about it too much. But what's more interesting to us is what are the metrics for the concentration of the solute? So the mole fraction of the solute, chi 2, is equal to the number of moles of the solute divided by the number of moles of solvent plus number of moles of solute. As I said, that's called the mole fraction. Chi 2, the Greek letter chi. We have the molality of the solvent which is equal to the number of moles, sorry, molality of the solute, which is equal to the number of moles of the solute divided by the number of kilograms of the solvent. So that's called molality. And what we're probably most familiar with from general chemistry is the concentration or the molarity, which is the number of moles of component two divided by the number of liters of solution. So here our reference is the number of moles in the solution. Here the reference is the mass of the solution. And here the reference is the volume of the solution. So each of these are going to have different activities defined for them. We have A2x, which approaches the mole fraction as the mole fraction goes to zero. So in a Henry's Law standard state for our solute, we want the activity to approach the mole fraction as it goes to zero. Or we could define the activity in terms of molality. We could have the activity approach the molality as we get a more uh, dilute and uh, sparingly dissolved solute as M2 goes to zero. Also, we could have the activity for the molarity. A2C approaches the molarity as the molarity approaches zero. Then all of these have their own activity coefficients. Chi, uh, sorry, gamma 2 chi equals A2 chi over chi 2, which is equal to uh, the vapor pressure of it divided by its Henry's law coefficient according to mole fraction. The, sorry, the activity coefficient, that's the word, activity coefficient uh, in terms of molality is equal to the molality activity divided by the molality, which is equal to the vapor pressure of it divided by its Henry's law coefficient for molality. And finally, the activity coefficient for concentration of the solute is equal to the activity uh, based off molarity divided by the molarity. And the activity for the molarity is equal to the vapor pressure divided by the Henry's law coefficient in terms of molarity. So we've gone through this trouble to define the activity for the solvent and for the solute, because as we saw from previous videos, activity directly relates to chemical potential. Chemical potential directly relates to the equilibrium between vapor and, uh, so and solution phases, and that tells us directly about the Gibbs energy of each of the phases. So we're going to need to use the activity of the solute and the solvent to understand what the Gibbs energy of the solution is and to derive some useful relationships that are going to come from this chapter on solid liquid solutions.